Welcome to the Life of the Next podcast. Thank you for having me. No, it's good to have you on, Georgia. So what part of Next are you in? Uh, so I work on women's non-clothing um, on the licensed team as a trainee buyer. And what is non-clothing? It's because it's, it's quite internal. Yeah, phrase, it's, isn't it? um, so the shoes, nightwear, uh, bags, jewellery, accessories, um, lingerie, swim, beach. So lots. Yeah. <laughs> A bit of everything, to be honest. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you said they're branded, right? So the team I'm on is licensed. Licensed, yeah. sorry, not branded. Because so, yeah, there's so. loads of different... Cause it, yeah. Because yes, a lot yeah. of people don't know we work with brands and, you know, yeah. all of that as well. So just explain that for, to me. So it's different to, like, brands where they... Um, I think they just work with the brands, but we um, develop product for these brands that we work with. So it's like a... Kind of like a collaborative relationship. Um We've obviously got like a team of experts who know all the technical things. So brands come to us and we basically um, develop product for them. You know, we've got all the right people that have years of experience of, you know, for example, swimwear and the best way to fit swimwear and the fabrics and the supply base. So we then develop that product for them. And that's just part of the next offering that's expanded, isn't it, over the past, well, yeah. even five years. Like five years ago, we, we were doing bits of this, but now it's really really grown yeah so this yeah. team um is only a couple of years old started as just two people and now i think there's well we split into two teams now there's oh, about okay. 17 of us so yeah it's a big growing team we're kind of taking on more brands um mm. yeah it's really exciting and is that always is that always something you wanted to get into or is that kind of as you've come into next and started your career you've been like oh i didn't realize that was there um I always thought I'd want to work on women's wear. Yeah. Um, and then when I became a buyer, um, and they said, oh, you're going to license. I didn't really know what to expect. <laughs> I didn't know how much we how input we'd have into like, you know, developing the product mm. uh, compared to main range. But um, yeah, I love it now. It's it's good because we do, um, whereas nightwear, just do nightwear. We do nightwear, swim, slippers, uh, beachwear. So I've kind of had a bit of a, an insight into like lots of different product areas. Mm. So yeah, it's it's good. And when and when someone says, because someone said a few few different people have said sorry on here like, about developing product. What is that like? What do you do when you develop products exactly? Um, so we're like on the buying side. We're like right from the start. So um, find inspiration. We do like comp shops. Um, the What's team, that? Uh, so we'll go. Um, we did one in London a few weeks ago. Um, the team are going to Paris next week. Nice. Um, just looking for that like, inspiration of like different fabrics or shapes or trends we might have um, could work into. Mm. Um, and then we, you know, take that inspiration and develop products basically for the brand. So we're looking at different fabrics, different colors. Um, yeah, just literally from the start. And then we're, you know, fitting the garments, um, making sure they fit correct. So it's literally from initial idea to the product i guess yeah and is buying and he's buying something you've always wanted to do um no <laughs> so <laughs> i went to uni i did psychology okay um oh, which okay. i i was gonna do either that or fashion marketing went for psychology loved it but always knew that that was where my real interest was um always liked fashion um and then i worked in store in that and it's not uncommon, is it, as well, for people within buying, well, within product, as we call it, to move around anyway. That, yeah. that happens a lot. So, like you say, you're on that team at the moment, but quite easily, if, like you say, you want to stay at Next, so you want to progress to assistant, that could be in a totally different team. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think there's quite a... People tend to stay within Next, whether they move. Mm. I don't know if you've moved at all. Uh, um, yeah, a bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, quite a bit. Yeah, quite a bit. Yeah. Um, but it's nice that you know people do move, but people do stay within next, which I think is it's encouraging that people mm. want to stay here. You know. What 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 do you think that is? Because you know you you said you were in store, and how long were you in store for? Um, I was there for five years. Oh right. So, so alongside studies. Yeah. But, um. Yeah. Quite a while. So this must be something that's attracting you to the brand generally then, yeah? Yeah. What do you think, think that is? Always loved working there. Um, but I think as I, from when I first started, um, 
you have to buy like uniform allowance in store. Yeah. And when I first started, it was like, oh God, would I wear any of this? Okay. And as, as I, you know, just as I was starting to um, think about leaving and come to head office, it was like, actually, some of this product's quite cool. Yeah. And now I'm behind the scenes and seeing all the product we're, you know, planning for like next year. Um, I think it's been quite nice to see the way next is changing. And mm. I'm actually now a customer. Um, so that kind of makes me like, I don't know, it's exciting to be a part of and see that there's this kind of journey of the way next is expanding to new customers. So I, I like being a part of that. I think it's cool. And that's a massive opportunity for us, isn't it? Yeah, Because I, I, I know when you said that there, that resonates with me that you still get, even, even people, you know, up to my age or past my age, I don't think they realise the breadth or the variety right. or the fashion focused stuff we actually do. Yeah. Because I bet you get all the time from your friends, oh, where's that from? Yeah. yeah. I'm like, it's actually next. <laughs> yeah. It's I'm trying next. to sell it and I'm like, it's next. Yeah. Like, but they, people don't, I guess, have the um, idea that, you know, there there is that product there for them. But I, you know, everything we do is so, we're so focused on trend and newness and mm. it, there's such a push for that. Um, and we're always looking at catwalks and, you know, what's the big it trend? Um, so we are very fashion forward, which I think people are starting to pick up on. Yeah. Um, but it's just getting it out there that, you know, there's product for um, everyone. You know, there's a younger customer, but there's also maybe what you, your traditional next customer might have been before. Mm. Is there certain things that you've seen, even in your short time from store or even being here, that next have pushed more of a day? In terms of fashion and, and trends, is there anything that you've seen that like, oh, that's great that we've started doing that? I think it's like the, um, like the kind of like trends that like I kind of see on like TikTok, for example. Yeah. For example, um, there's some leopard print jeans, which um, Next have done. And that was all over TikTok. And that was something that I was seeing a lot. And it's like, Next have that. You know, it's yeah. the little kind of the trends that maybe like like me and my friends are wearing, you know, we've got that. Um, so that's something that I've kind of seen as um, next to doing more, you know, they're mm. tapping into these trends that maybe they wouldn't have done before. And what and what's it what's it now been like? What what's it now been like going from that merch role? And it wasn't again because you didn't enjoy it, it was just purely because you were like, hang on a minute, there's there's a there's something missing from my career here. That's yeah. You wanted. To, what's been what's been the biggest change for you? Do you think since you've done um, that? I think it was the thing I wanted to get involved in is like the product development side, like really being in the the nitty gritty and the detail of it. So whereas you are still with merch, you know, you're mm. really involved in the range build, the selection, and you need to know the trends because you're you're buying the stock. Um, whereas with buying now, I'm in more of the like approving the fabrics and the colors and um, really getting in the detail of like little things like that you might not think of like the trims or we obviously do branded product and it's like little bits of like hard, uh, branded hardware and stuff that you might not think, but there's like so much that goes into it. Um, so that's kind of, I feel like I'm really in the product development side mm. now, which, which I love. And talk, talk me through the different stages of product development because it's not like you just have one meeting, is it? It's, no. It's a long. It's quite a long pro process, and rightly so. But because I think a lot of people probably just think you're probably just sitting there, and go, yeah, we'll have some of that, we'll have some of that. But it's not that, is it? No. And I think when I was in store, I just you know stuff would be delivered, and I'd be like, oh, cool. <laughs> Didn't know what went into it, and no. actually now I'm here. It's you know where. Um, I mean, we're planning like a year ahead. So we're looking at now like July and we're like, you know, okay, what, um, you know, what inspiration have we got? Mm. Um, what new things have we not tried? So there's that initial inspiration and then it's, you know, designers draw up CADs and then we're- What's a CAD? <laughs> it's like, like a drawing essentially of like the, the item that we want. Okay. Um, and then that gets briefed to suppliers and we get samples in and we'll then range build them work with tech to kind of consider, you know, what fabrics do we want to use? Do we want to push more premium fabrics mm. or do we want to look at more sustainable, like more recycled fabrics? Um, they get range built, they get fit. That's something I had no idea happened, but we'll fit like one t-shirt maybe like four times and 
tiny little tweaks will happen. Like, let's take a centimeter off of it. And like, <laughs> there's so much and attention does that to make detail. A big yeah, yeah. It does. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. there's so much attention to detail, which if you were just in the store and picked up something, you maybe wouldn't know. Mm. Um, and then we have a selection meeting, sign off with our managers. Um, on my team, we then sign off with the brand. Um, and then it's, you know, progressing it, approving the fabrics, approving mm. um, the trims and the hand feel. And it's so, there's so much that goes into it. And you're just constantly, you know, progressing this range and making sure the product is perfect. And what part of that do you, when you've been going through that, what part do you really love the most? What's parts that you've been like, oh, this is great. Like, I love a bit of this. Um, I love the range build stage. Okay, where, what's that then? So that, so we've um, we've thought of ideas. We've got yeah. the designers have brought cards to the table. We might have samples from suppliers. Mm. Um, and then that's like, right, what, what product do we want to put in this range? So we do it um, by phase. So for example, we're looking at July, 2025. Okay, what, what do we want? Have we got um, a good balance in the range of a younger customer, an older customer? Have mm. we got... Um, is there a new customer we're missing? We're considering, you know, what price point. Um, with our team, it's um, a bit more of a premium price point, but we're also considering, is there that entry-level price point? Have we got a mid-ground price point? Um, what what fabrics are we missing? Can we work into new, you know, new textures, new um, embellishments or ways we can elevate the product? So that's the real kind of essentially building the range um, part, which which I love. And then just seeing that kind of, develop and eventually then go online it's um it's rewarding yeah like, I bet. so much went into that and and you see it sell and you're like oh yeah, yeah. rewarding slash relief as well because i guess there's quite yeah. feels quite you know to to think about july like now uh is great because obviously we have to do that to get the product and yeah. get it made but so obviously you i guess you're always you've got to i guess you've got to do a lot of research and then you've got to trust You've got to be really into it and understand it because, like you say, you can't measure a trend or anything like that. Because if you do, it's a bit of a, oh, damn, we missed that opportunity. Yeah. 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 And we have like, we have held options where we can get trends in a bit quicker. Okay. So um, that's still available. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, we have to really make sure we're choosing the right stuff for the right time, the right time of year. For example, mm. if it's summer or if it's, uh, we do a lot of nightwear in October, November's big for nightwear around Christmas. Okay. So it's just making sure we've got, um, we've covered everything. Essentially, mm. you've got to make sure you've got um, enough of everything. You know, we don't want to be like, oh, we've that, we've missed that. So, yeah. Yeah, and I know as well speaking to, well, more merchandisers, they tell me all the time that it's so weather reactive as well sometimes. Yeah, like, always in trade. It's like, oh, um, you know, we've had a good week. The weather's good. It's yeah. always, always the weather, yeah, the, you know. All the sun's out, everyone's selling. spending their money. Yeah. yeah. It's raining, old coats have come back at Yeah, yeah umbrellas yeah. are doing great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and can you and can you remember like, so how long have you been at the NDB campus total then now? Uh, almost a year. Almost so a year. Since September last year. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. And, and what's that, not just, you know, in buying, uh, merch and buying, but what's, What's the whole experience been like coming to the Enderby campus and how's that been like? Is there anything that stands out for you? Um, I think I've loved it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> loved it. Um, I um, have had um, quite a nice kind of, there's a nice community of like trainees, okay. um, which I think stands out for me. Um, I guess moving away from home, starting a new job. Um, I was, um, went into the trainee house, which is something that, I think was just great because I've now got this community of like 20, 30 trainees that I can kind of, you know, even just like a hello around the office. Mm. Um, I think that really helped my experience because if I need to go on to menswear, I'm like, oh, I know someone down there. Um, so that's really stood out to me as, I guess it made it less daunting coming to such a big, didn't realize how big an office was. <laughs> it's, it's big. Um, yeah. And then having that community of people in the same position as me, who I can ask questions that I might not want to ask my team. Mm. Um, that's been, yeah, just such a great experience. And is that, how, how's that, what happens in that community? Because I guess people are like, is it, is it forced fun or is it natural or is it kind of, is, um, does it feel like really like, 
to use like a social like organic does it feel not yeah is it like yeah yeah it, i'd say yeah right? i'd yeah. say it's quite natural yeah, yeah i think we're all we're all in the same boat yeah so it's you know um you're all doing the same thing you're all experienced the same stuff so um in my experience it has felt that there's um they do like socials for trainees mm. which um is i guess a nice way to te- speak to people outside of work as well mm. um and then from that you, you just meet so many people and it does feel quite natural because we're all like-minded we're all doing the same thing we all want the same thing yeah. so yeah in my experience it's just been a really nice organic way of you know i've made some really good friends which is nice that's good that's good because that's that's really important and as well you know myself being here quite a while as well you, you kind of tend up growing up and as you grow and their careers mm. go you kind of that that friendship just sticks there yeah you might not speak to people as much along the way or you know one person might go and work in that department or that department so you don't naturally see them as much but mm. every time you do it's like oh okay yeah and it's good to have those contacts as well definitely how long have you been here uh literally coming up to 15 years amazing <laughs> yeah long time <laughs> long long time but not not i never look at it as like um like oh 15 years is the achievement it's more what have i been able to do in that time as yeah. well there's loads i've been able to do whether it's been you know working over in pr or working over in social media for next official and then now working and leading the employer brand mm. Like when you asked earlier, have I moved around a bit? And I was thinking, I was like, yeah, I have actually. And things have evolved nicely. Mm, And I think that's the thing that whether you're in like an operations role like me or in product, Mm. there's always those opportunities there. Yeah, there's so much opportunity. And I think that shocked me as a trainee that people want to give you opportunity. You're not just there doing the boring stuff. There's people want to know your opinion they want they want you to grow um my team are always pushing me to you know share your opinion and mm. how can we push you to you know maybe present in a meeting or um i've already been given like a little project of you know developing my own um like style with a supplier and That's working cool. on that and it's not like you're a trainee mm. it, you're just part of the team and you're given so many opportunities to grow which is that shocked not shocked me but i guess it's it was nice to know that you know there's all the opportunity to make your stamp on it just as much as someone who's a higher level than you oh yeah 100 percent. every pretty much you know everyone i work with every manager and stuff they don't want to be there like oh team we've got to do this and we've got to you need to do that mm. you know i always say with my team i'm like well tell me what's working you know tell me what's working for that demographic you're in what do what should we be doing mm. internally how do we talk to people better what should we be putting out on social media you know yeah. to to attract people to the brand because like the clothing i think sometimes I think oh next oh is that just stores it's not there's so much to it um yeah. like you know this podcast people are probably like oh, i didn't know that existed yeah either. so yeah it's opportunities are everywhere and did that surprise you from was that there from day one yeah yeah literally from day one there's always been kind of a push for um you know what can you how can you like do do more um and yeah it kind of shocked me that it's not just uh um you're here to just be part of the team it's you know um there's all this opportunity like it's you know take everything and Mm. i think i've tried to do that like any opportunity i'm like yeah like come on the podcast i was like yeah (laughs) okay um but yeah, it's been good. Good. And is the is the learning support along the way of the of the whole program? Because it is a really good program, isn't it? Is that what's that been like? Um, they do like training workshops. Okay. Which are good because you kind of get a obviously everyone's really busy day to day, so you learn on the job, but there's some things that you need to just sit down for three hours and really unpick and mm. and learn stuff from. But I think because people have been here for so long everyone knows everyone's so like knowledgeable so I think I learned so much from just the people I'm working with um ask them questions and everyone's willing to you know explain something to you or sit you down and for example talk about different fabric compositions and stuff you might not know um but yeah there's always I feel like I'm always learning stuff from 
I think the people more than anything. Oh, really? Yeah. The people that are in your team and around. Yeah. You, and yeah. on my floor um, yeah. across different teams, um, people want you to to learn and want want to share their knowledge with you, which is nice. It's not like, oh, I'm too busy. It's mm. it's like, yeah, let's put time in and talk about, you know, we can explain that. Yeah, it's not it's not like to use a really, really old reference. It's not like a devil wear Prada environment no, at all, No, is it? which I think people think, oh, you work in fashion. Yeah. That's what it's like, but it's really not at all. It's such a, um, such a welcoming environment. Like, I think one of the biggest things for me is like the social side of coming to the office. Okay. Which um, people I know that don't work here, maybe work from home a lot, but I would hate that. I love coming in. <laughs> it, there's such a nice social element and yeah. people want to have a chat to you and people want to, um, you know, people care about you and want to know, mm. you know, what you're doing at the weekend or um, that's that's something I really love about being in the office. And being in the office, just personally, do you find it, do you know, like when you're collaborating stuff, you find that easier in the office than virtual? Yeah, yeah, yeah I think same. so. It's, yeah. obviously everyone loves to work from home, but I think it's it's good to just all sit down and, you know, crack on with something in a meeting um, mm. and just have that social element of it, you know. It's amazing what you can get out of a meeting as well when you're mm. all in the room, even from body yeah. language and stuff. Yeah. Like, you, it's like if someone, if I say an idea or say something to the team and their body language is a certain way and they're like, I'm like, okay, they're like, Matt, no way. <laughs> That's... That's never going to work. Like you, you're way off the mark. Or oh no, no. You know you can read stuff a lot. It's like unspoken, isn't it? And yeah. You can get a lot. It feels like you can get a lot through a lot more stuff. Definitely, yeah. yeah. Especially when we're like you know range building. God, yeah. Hold and a product up, are and people are like, mm, not sure. You don't really get that on if you're on you know Google Meet. No, you have um, to say it. Is it? You have to be a lot more direct, don't you, on a virtual? Yeah, yeah. and I think being in product. You've got to be in, you've got to be in, you know, feeling the fabrics, yeah. looking at the samples, you know, you can't do that online. No. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's great. I love it. Oh, good. I mean, that's good. And it's good that you feel like there's a social community to it as well, not just work. Because everyone does work really hard though. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. hundred. It's not just no, you know, no, having no. chats, but I think it helps when everyone's very welcoming and, you know, they're... Um, you know, you're all working hard, but, you know, everyone's, um, you know, supporting each other. It's a very collaborative, in product especially, um, kind of work relationship. So you need that kind of, you know, social side of it as well to, I think, make that really gel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really important for relationships, mm -hmm. regardless, like building mm -hmm. that, you know, kind of rapport with someone and understanding the way they work as well, because we all work very differently. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely. And I think it's figuring out how we all work together which I think took one thing from my psychology degree it's like <laughs> everyone works different everyone learns different you know everyone communicates different mm. so yeah taking one thing from that and sin and if you look if you think back to when you were doing your psychology degree mm -hmm. and now you think and when you're applying and if you you know if someone's listening to this now and they might be doing a psychology degree or mm -hmm. a marketing degree or they might even actually be doing they might like, no, I definitely want to work in fashion. Yeah. What sort of advice do you think you'd give them if they were looking to apply and come into next? I think if you want to be in fashion and you've not done fashion, don't let that put you off. Okay. Because nice. I think it put me off. And actually, um, especially when I was interviewing for buying, you know, I was speaking to buying managers and they were like, oh, I did maths. <laughs> and it's like, oh, Okay. <laughs> Um, and now they're like buying managers. So I think don't let it put you off if you're passionate about it. I think that's the biggest thing. As long as you're passionate and you work hard, you've got drive, you want to succeed, that's all you need. I think it's them people skills and just a, a love for fashion. You don't need, you know, whilst a fashion background is great, you know, I've come from psychology and, you know, I'm, I think I'm doing okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, just go for it. It's... Um, as long as you're passionate about it and you will work hard, then yeah, you'll do great. Perfect. Well, I think that's a really great place to end. I appreciate you coming on and giving Thank us you insight. For me. No, no, it's been great. And um, yeah, I look forward to see where you go with your career next and yeah, yeah me what too. happens. Yeah. But thanks for coming on, Georgia. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you for having me.